The International Monetary Fund has released its estimates for U.S. growth, and they defy some of the worst predictions for disaster that bubbled up in 2022. The U.S. economy is expected to dodge a severe recession, but still see a 1.6 percent growth in 2023 and 1.1 percent growth in 2024. That's in part due to monetary tightening intended to control inflation, but also because of a humbling of lender exuberance after several high-profile bank failures. But the IMF had better news for Turkey, where it forecasts 3.6 percent growth in 2024, but revised down estimates for 2023 from 3 percent to 2.7 percent. For more on this now, let's go to Naeem Aslam, who is CIO at Zay Capital Markets in London. Naeem, thank you very much for joining us today. So on the banking side of things first, is the contagion risk really contained by now um, after the, the bank phase that we've seen? Do we have reasons to believe that there are still weak links, be it in the US or in Europe? Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me. Well, if, I think if you look at the drama which is taking place over in the United Kingdom, for example, especially with respect to NetWest, you will see that the banking crisis is still very much here. It is still uh, at the in the in the in, uh, on, on on the backside. It is still very much working, and traders are still highly concerned about this one. If you look at the overall situation in the United States, you would still see that there are signs that we will we this particular drama isn't finished yet why are these concerns that is the most important question the reason that traders are still very much concerned is because the the central banks around the globe they're still very much of the mind frame that they need to increase interest rate in order to tame inflation and as long as they continue to increase interest rate i think this particular aspect is very much going to remain on the table Right, and Naeem, as you say, the banking uh, crisis is still here. And therefore, do you think that the Fed will be cautious at this point and somewhat pause uh, the rate hikes this year? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Look, if you look at the Fed terminal rate for the end of this year, it still stands at 5%. So that indicates that, yes, there could be a possibility that the Federal Reserve will be slowing down the process of increasing their interest rate. But what is more important is what is on the economic docket for today. For instance, today we have the U.S. CPI number, and then followed by that we have the Fed meeting, uh, uh, Fed minutes as well. So if this U.S. CPI number still shows that there is a plenty of stubbornness in inflation and that the Federal Reserve's uh, labor in, in all the labor that they have employed in order to tame inflation hasn't worked to an extent that they like to, then we could potentially see more crisis coming. But if inflation numbers today show that, OK, you know what, things have actually started to improve, which we think could be a possibility, but again, traders need to be cautious because of higher oil prices or how OPEC is very much pricing things and then keeping the prices higher. So I think the Federal Reserve, especially Jerome Powell, is at a very, very critical um, point in life, in, in, in his career, because he has to choose between price stability and banking crisis. And let's see if he's going to make the trade off, because traders are expecting that banking crisis should be contained and the Federal Reserve should ease off the cycle of hiking interest rate. All right, the CPI number, which we will we'll absolutely closely watch today. Naeem Aslam, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And now let's go to other top stories from around the world. Boeing has delivered 130 aircraft in the first quarter of 2023, inching past rival Airbus. The US plane maker delivered 64 planes to customers in March alone, the highest since December. The bulk of the sales included over 52 of its 737 MAX jets, as it gears up to increase production of the planes amid lingering supply chain problems and worker training strains since the pandemic. Ford will spend around $1.3 billion to transform its assembly plant in Canada into an electric vehicle production hub. Under the plans, the U.S. car maker will start building a new 38,000 square meter on-site battery plant in the transformed campus next year. The investment is part of Ford's ambitions to reach production capacity for 2 million EVs globally by the end of 2026. And the Chile's Congress has overwhelmingly approved a bill to reduce the work week from 45 to 40 hours over five years. The bill aims to improve the quality of life in the South American nation and will prevent businesses from reducing salaries. The move comes at a time when countries like Britain and Spain are experimenting with cutting weekly work hours further.